Hmm. Stamp your foot when you want me to start. I, I want the hand to be at 60. Not screaming, but still loud. I'm going to kill you. Brings the knife down overhand. Blade is collapsed. Seven catches knife in his hand and falls to floor a second after shout. He rises a bit and rolls onto his right side. Or stares at him for a few moments, then digs into his pocket and produces a handkerchief. It takes him a moment or two to unfold handkerchief. Then he bends down and wipes handle of knife. He looks about as though checking to be sure that he has done everything. Then he rushes to door that leads out of jury room and wipes doorknob. Then he turns around full circle and wipes doorknob again. He would have both wiped both knobs. Then he rushes right and goes back to door of jury room and repeats double process on doorknob. Then he stamps his foot and cries out, stop. 20, yeah, 20, 25, 29, about 29 and a half seconds, I'd say. And whoever did murder the old man, and I think it was the kid, he still had to run down the hall and down the stairs, at least one flight of stairs. You see? You see? The old man downstairs may have been wrong at the time, but in view of this, I think it's quite reasonable to assume that he did see the kid run downstairs. So now both time sequences check, the one you did and the one we did. What with running downstairs and everything, it does pretty much check out on times. Sure, he's an old man who wants attention. He's probably right, but the old man feels what a, the way everyone does. A life is at stake. So the story of the old man well, may well be true, except for the fact that he absolutely swore under oath that it was only 15 seconds. We seem to all agree that it was 25 to 40 seconds later. You are now admitting that the old man lied in one case and told the truth in the other. I admit that this does tend to confirm the story of the old man, but in part of his a part, but in part he is now a proven liar, and this is by your own admission. That may be true, but the old man lies in part, and I think it will change my vote once more. But I think I will change my vote once more. Guilty. What about you? What do you think? I'm just not sure what I think. I want to talk some more. At first I thought guilty, then I changed. Now I'm sort of swimming back to guilty. And what about you? No, I am now in real doubt, real doubt. I said guilty. I was right the first time. Now we're beginning to make sense in here. It seems to be about nine guilty to three not guilty. One more question about the old man downstairs. How many of you live in an apartment buildings? Eight hands go up, including his own. I don't know what you're thinking, but I know what I'm thinking. What's that? I do not live in a tenement, but it is close, and there is just enough light in the hall, so you can see the steps. No more. The light bulbs are so small. And this murder took place in a tenement. Remember how we stumbled on the steps? The police officers were using big bulbs, and one even had a flashlight, remember? An old man who misjudged the time by 20 seconds. On this, we all agree. This old man looked down the dark hallway of a tenement and recognized a running figure. He was 100% wrong about the time. It took twice as long as he thought. Then could not the old man be 100% wrong about who he saw? That's the most idiotic thing I've ever heard of. You're making that up out of thin air. We're a hung jury. Let's be honest about it. Do you truly feel that there is no room for reasonable doubt? Yes, I do. I beg your pardon, but maybe you don't understand the term reasonable doubt. What do you mean I don't understand it? Who do you think you are to talk to me like that? How do you like this guy? He comes over here running for his life, and before he can take a big breath, he's telling us how to run the show. The arrogance of him. No one is asking where he anyone came from. I was born right here. Or where your father came from. Maybe it shouldn't hurt us to take a few tips from people who come running here. Maybe they learn something. We don't know. We're not so perfect. Please, I am used to this. It's all right. Thank you. It's not all right. Okay, okay. I apologize. Is that what you want? That's what I want. All right, let's stop arguing. Who's got something constructive to say? Well, something's been bothering me a little. There's a whole business about the stab wound and how it was made, the downward angle of it, you know? Don't tell me we're going to start that. They went over it and over it in court. I know they did, but I don't go along with it. The boy is five feet, eight inches tall. 
His father was six feet two inches tall. That's a difference of six inches. It's a very awkward thing to stab down into a chest of someone who is a half a foot taller than you are. Look, you're not going to be satisfied till you see it again. I'm going to give you a demonstration. Somebody, get up. Looks around the table. Eight stands up and walks toward him. Three closes his knife and puts it in his pocket. They stand face to face and look at each other for a moment. Okay, now watch this. I don't want to have to do it again. Crouches down until he is quite a bit shorter than eight. Is that six inches? That's more than six inches. Okay, let it be more. Reaches into his pocket and takes out knife. He flips it open, changes its position in his hand, and holds the knife aloft, ready to stab. He and eight looks steadily into each other's eyes. Then he stabs downward, hard.